uh, doing something with a looks like a footing or something for a steel building. Looks like there's two there's two trucks here. One truck is discharging now, and one truck's washing. I mean, there's lots of things, obviously, or I wouldn't share it with you. But uh, you don't have a set route for the day. If you've watched some of my other videos, I hope you do, you'll hear me say something like, well, we'll go back to the yard and see if they have anything else for us. So we, uh, we take every delivery is one at a time. Every day is different. You don't come in in the morning and you have, you know, five or six deliveries you have to make it through before you can go home. I know a lot of trucking jobs, especially, obviously, pickup and delivery, uh, you have a set route that you have to get through by the end of the day. And here, we come in in the morning and we just take deliveries. The dispatcher has a big list of jobs that need to get done and when trucks come in they get loaded and off they go until everything for that day is done and sometimes a little bit extra. So it's good that you don't have a, a set schedule. You know you, you have to get through this, this and this in order to you know to be done for the day. It's nice because it's not it's not as predictable um, but it also it's frustrating at the end of the day when you think oh man we got to be done now and then you come back in the yard and you get another delivery so sometimes that's frustrating but anyway it looks like we got uh, got two trucks in front of us this guy over here is loading and he's waiting so we got a few minutes to hang out so I'll check back in when we get loaded and uh, we'll get off to the job site. Well, Miguel's in front of us and he's under the plant. So we're gonna pull up and get in line. We wait back there in the yard. There's a big open space for all the trucks to wait. And then you back under the plant when it's your turn to load. But when you're on deck, you know, you're next, you come up here and, and you get lined up in front of the plant. And when the truck getting loaded pulls out, it's real quick to just back right in and get loaded. It'll just be a couple minutes. trip. 
Normally my jobs are 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes away. This one's over an hour. <laughs> so that's cool. It's not really a big deal. It gives me time to listen to podcasts, audiobooks, you know, just drive. It's kind of nice. Anyway, I'm going to switch over to time lapse time warp I guess and uh, leave the camera charging and I'll see you when we get there
So if you lift up that cone like you're building a sandcastle and the concrete slumps down one inch from where it was, that's a one inch slump. If it slumps down six inches, that means it's wetter, that's a six inch slump. And usually when you're doing foundations, footings, uh, curbs, anything where you have big gaps in your molds, you're probably pouring about a four. That's sort of like oatmeal. It doesn't flow. So Miguel's done. And then when you're doing uh, sidewalks, driveways, garages, large flat surfaces, usually you're pouring about a six. And that's like a milkshake, it flows. It just makes it easier for the contractors. Looks like we're gonna get going here. Yeah, it looks like they're pouring another shed just like this one over here on the left. And uh, they're pouring footings for more piers. Makes me nervous, I can't see him. You gotta be careful pouring footings because obviously it's really easy to overflow it. And this guy's hand signals are kind of crazy, so uh, <laughs> I just hope I don't accidentally rip that rebar out of the ground. I can't see you, man. And when they're right behind the truck like this, I wish he'd let me get up on the side, but this is where he wanted me. When they're right behind you like that, you can't see them half the time. And they stick their hand out, but they don't realize you can't see their hand. So they're telling you to go forward and you can't see them. So this is called tailgating. When you hear me say tailgating, that means you're in the cab driving, operating the chute and the drum and everything, and there's somebody behind you telling you what they need you to do. So I guess the only other option is a pump, where your only job with a pump is to keep the hopper full. Tailgating in a manual is interesting sometimes. You gotta be really easy on the clutch, but when the ground is soft like this, sometimes you jump. I think he's gonna have me move over. I can't see you anymore. There you go. gonna shake out some of the excess in the chutes he's probably gonna have me lock it and raise it up yep lock the chute so it doesn't wiggle we can't move the chute a lot of people don't realize that the big uh, the extensions on the back there we can't move them we can move them up and down but not left and right the only thing we can do is lock it and unlock it rattle around in the drum you got about two yards left and I'm starting to rattle oh man this guy really likes hand signals <laughs> go forward back up up down start stop speed up slow down 
That's good, that makes it more interesting. You got something to do. You want me to lock it? You never said lock it. Oh, oh he wants me to move over. Yeah, when they, usually the contractors will put the chutes sort of like right in the back. I don't know if you can see that, but the chute is way off to the side. And uh, you can't lift it up that high when it's off to the side because it'll hit the tires. There, see this truck over here? Those tires in the back? If the chute is too far off to the side, you can't raise it up that high. And so while you're moving around and stuff, concrete will spill out the back of the chute. So usually they put it right in the middle where you can just see it in your mirror so that you can you know, know if you're gonna hit something, but sometimes they don't, but whatever. Come grab it. I'm gonna lower it down a little bit. Unlock it for him. Woo! It's too high. And those chutes, when there's three of them like that and they're full of concrete, those things are heavy. So it is not easy to move those things around back there. He's telling me to look at I don't know what he's talking about. Move over. That's why it's important to, obviously he's running the shoe, but even if he wasn't, it would be important to have somebody back there watching because he saw something I didn't. And he wanted me to move over. That works for him. Unlock the chute, drop it down so he can move it, and back we go. And stop. Oop, down. Stop. And back a little more. Stop. Discharge. He's got that weird little circle motion that means spin your drum all right we got emptied out so we're gonna come over here the uh, the foreman wants us to wash out on the other side of this dirt pile over here a lot of times they'll dig a hole or something for you to wash out in, but sometimes they just have a spot that's, uh, you know, it's already got a bunch of ground they need to move or gravel they're gonna bulldoze anyway, so they want you to wash out over there. I'm the fourth truck here. The first three washed out back there and the foreman didn't like that, so he told us the next uh, three trucks after me and me we're gonna come over here and wash out on the side of this dirt pile. So not bad, took about 20 minutes to get emptied out. Doing uh, footings for a new building out here in a farm way out here north of uh, Pasco. So I'll get washed out real quick. We'll go back to the yard and get another load.
Thank you.